welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I recently posted a photo of this on Twitter and was asked to give a rundown and a block diagram of all the parts and what they are. So first off, this has been designed as a transceiver to receive from and transmit to Oscar 100 satellite. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, then you'll know that I have a keen interest in getting a Oscar 100 ground station together and working. So the box itself is a waterproof box with the idea that this can be left outside and close to my satellite dish. At the heart of this is an Adam Pluto SDR, which I've modified with a higher stability TCXO when transmitting on 2.4 gigs and upper sideband. Now the Pluto itself has two paths, an RX path and a TX path. It's full duplex, meaning it can transmit and receive at the same time. So to power all of this, I have a 12 volt power line coming in, which first goes off to a buck converter there on the left to step down from 12 volt to 5 volt. Now the 5 volts is then used to power the Pluto and the CN0417 preamp board, which is connected to the TX port of the Pluto. Now the white cable coming into the box is 75 ohm coax, which the other end is attached to an LMB attached to a dish. Now this goes through a bias T, a 20 dB attenuator, and then to the RX port of the Pluto. You'll also notice that the bias T has a 12 volt input, which is sent up the white coax cable to power the LMB. Now the CN0417 preamp, which is connected to the Pluto's TX port, is also connected to a four to five watt 2.4 gigahertz amplifier via a small patch cable. Now the output side of the RF amp has a thick F0 coax connected which connects to the patch antenna on the dish. Now this 2.4 gigahertz amplifier requires 24 volt input. So we have a DC to DC step up converter to convert the 12 volt to 24 volts. Now as my aim is to use the Pluto remotely via my home network, I've attached an ethernet adapter directly to the Pluto. I'll be creating a video soon on how you can configure this. But as you can see here, I have attached the ethernet adapter to the underside of the lid. And I can just attach my long ethernet cable to it and then position the cable coming through the watertight holes at the front of the box. Now I didn't want to drill any holes in this waterproof box because of moisture. So I had to think of another way to anchor down all of the components. So I ordered these tie wrap bases, which are adhesive on one side. They simply stick to the inside of the box. You can position them where you need them and then you can thread a tie wrap through the top of it to hold the component in place. So here we have a very simple block diagram of the components needed. To the left we have the Pluto SDR which has around 3 dBm output at 2.4 gigahertz. Now this is then fed into an analog device's CN0417 preamp and filter which has a true gain of 20 dB. So in theory we should have a preamp output close to 23 dB. Now this gives us close to 200 milliwatt RF power at 2.4 gigs which is then fed into the AMSAT RF amplifier. And the maximum amount of drive the AMSAT amp can take is actually 200 milliwatts. So this then should provide a four to five watt output. Now the output then travels down a one meter piece of Formula Zero low loss coax and it attaches to the patch antenna, which is on the dish. Now on the receive side, we have the LMB on the dish. This is receiving QO100's output signal at 10 gigahertz, and it's down converting it to an IF of around 739 megahertz, which is well within range of most SDR receivers. Now in the RX chain, we can also see a bias T. Now this is needed because the LMB requires 12 volts to be powered and to tell the LMB to receive in vertical polarization. Now the output from the bias T then goes into a 20 dB attenuator which is then fed into the receive port of the Pluto. Now the 20 dB attenuator is really there to stop the Pluto's front end from overloading. I'm using a short cable of around two meters from the LMB to the Pluto so it's not very much loss therefore I really need that attenuator to drop the signal a bit. So if we just head out into the garden, we'll take a quick look at this installed. Uh, I have two cables here on the right hand side of this video. One is the power, so you've got 12 volts, and the other is an ethernet cable, which goes from the shack and it goes into the box and connected directly to the Pluto. So you've got four cables going in, two coming out. One is the big thick black cable, that's for the 2.4 gigs connected to the patch antenna. And then you've got the white cable, which is the LMB IF out 739 megahertz back into the box. The dish here is a 1.2 meter 
millimeter sized dish it's on a temporary pole at the moment my plan is to put the dish a little bit higher maybe a couple of meters higher because if you've seen some of my other videos you'll notice that i suffer really bad with the trees in the way so i can't actually uh, receive the signal very well at all and i kind of have to rely on the web sdr for receive but let me load up the software which i use in the shack which is sdr console and i'm just going to do a quick test transmission through i'm going to be receiving with web sdr purely because the 10 gigahertz signal that's coming from the satellite is actually being attenuated by all the leaves on the trees at the moment so let's take a listen So as you can hear there, my signal is very weak indeed going up to QA100. Now, obviously, like I mentioned before, it's because my signal is getting attenuated by the leaves on the trees that's close to my property. Now, with the power output that I'm seeing, I'm seeing around five watts output. That should be plenty to reach QA100 with a good quality audio on sideband. But I think one of the things I'm going to do is take this gear out portable or the laptop and then set it up so that I've got clear line of sight directly to the satellite let's take a listen to how it should sound we're going to have a little listen to somebody else that's having a qso on oscar 100 but yeah they weren't that far south but actually you're quite right they were right on the northern tip the research stations of the the island so very conceivably from the equator you far more degree wise uh, removed than what they are so there we go, guys. That's an explanation of the of QO100 transmitter setup that I've got, which is all based around the Pluto SDR. And I just want to say a massive thanks to Simon Brown, who is the software developer for SDR console, because he's done some really remarkable things with the software so that it works really well on QO100. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comments section below. I will probably do a couple more videos on this topic at some point when I can get a reliable connection to the satellite and I can show you it all working really well. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.